Hello everyone, my name is Sarah Allard. I am the lead academic advisor for the School of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Today we are gonna talk about um, our program and give you a little information about um, what the school is all about. So the first thing we're gonna cover is just a, an overview of our school in general. So to kind of give you an idea of who we are, um, we are a, um, a larger, uh, engineering school. We have about 1,200 undergraduate students, um, a little over that, and a little over 700, 600 um, graduate students, both for the master's and the PhD program. And to give you an idea too, um, we are um, ranked number three for the undergraduate program of aero and astro engineering. We also have the number six graduate program as well. And then you probably already know some of these things about Purdue in general, we're the number three most public or most recognized public university in the US, along with being a top 10 most innovative school in the US for the last five years. As you know as well, the Purdue is considered the cradle of astronauts. Um, of the um, astronauts that have come out of Purdue, 18 have been AAE graduates. That is the list that you are seeing in front of you there. Um, currently, Laurel O'Hara is currently on the ISS, um, and our students have had a chance to talk to her while she's been up there. Some quick employment facts from the last year. We, um, our placement rating was 96%. 56% of those were those who went on to employment and 40% decided to continue their education um, either with a master's degree or moving on to a PhD program. Um, the average starting salary for those who did um, move into appointment is around $77,000 per year. Um, a lot of our students may continue on for education, but for this particular area, you don't necessarily have to get a master's degree in order to move into industry. Um, you'll see a list of different industry folks and in, um, different job titles that some of our graduates have gone on to do. You'll see that there's a mix of both um, aerospace areas, but also um, other areas such as being, um, um, you know, working in mechanical engineering areas or even robotics and software engineering as well. And talking about employment, you'll see um, a list of some of the employers that our graduates have gone on to. You'll see some large corporations there, along with some governmental agencies, and there's even some small startups that um, a lot of our alums end up going to. So there's a wide variety of places that our um, graduates end up going to. So now we're gonna do a quick overview of some of the degree information and some of the things that you will need to know and what it would take to obtain a degree in aerospace engineering. So you get there, it's 130 credits in total. Typically our students will complete that in four years. That includes your first year engineering program. Once you complete the degree, you get a Bachelor of Science in Aeronautical and Astronautical Engineering. So you are gonna get a degree in both areas, so both aeronautics and astronautics. Our degree program is um, split up into different specialization areas. A lot of our faculty are split up into these areas as well. So there's aerodynamics where we discuss um, airflow and fluids and um, lift and drag of uh, different aircraft. There's astrodynamics and space applications, um, which talks about kind of the orbit mechanics and how you um, move objects in space. Propulsion is gonna focus on how you move objects, whether that is um, doing a rocket launch to get out of the atmosphere or getting a plane um, propelled um, in atmosphere. There's also structures and materials uh, to see, you want to know, you know the kinds of structure and the kind of materials you need to make sure that um, whatever aircraft that you are using is going to remain in the air and do what you want it to do. Um, autonomy control is uh, the control of different aircraft um, to make sure that it also is moving in the direction you want it to go. And then aerospace systems design is really kind of a combination of all of these things together. Um, you are kind of looking big picture and how you put all of these items together into one cohesive system. To give you an idea of some of the course examples that go along with those different specialization areas, you will get classes in all six of the areas so that you know everything that there is to know about aerospace engineering. So you'll take things 
Typically in the sophomore year, you're going to focus more on um, the initial aeromechanics courses, and those are going to work, um, focus on more of your dynamics and statics courses. And then that you'll move into things about dynamics and vibrations, uh, fluid mechanics, aerodynamics, propulsion, um, different control systems. Uh, and then you'll also be doing some aerospace design as well. And then in your senior year, you move into more specialized courses where you may choose something like rocket propulsion or, orbit, or orbital mechanics. Um, you will choose an area specialization for your senior year, but that's not something you need to worry about right now. Um, but you do get classes in all of the areas so that you know what you want to pursue once you get to that last year. Our program culminates with a senior design course. So you choose between an aircraft project or a spacecraft project. Uh, I've got a couple of examples here. Um, the one for the spacecraft design was um, establishing a colony on the moon within the next decade. So the students had to work together to develop the habitats and research facilities. They studied life support and agriculture and figured out how to construct communication systems in order to make that happen. One of our aircraft design um, examples is where students got the option to design an aircraft of their choosing, depending on what the parameters were that the professor had set out. And they actually design, built, and tested their aircraft. So the projects that are done for senior design vary semester by semester, depending on what our faculty decide that they want to do. Um, but this is a great way to culminate your experience into one large scale project. So now let's talk a little bit just beyond the classroom. Um, this is where you are going to learn about different things that you can do beyond the different, stud uh, different classes that you will be taking. First thing I'd like to point out are the student organizations that you could potentially be part of even as a first year student. You do not have to wait till you're in our program to participate in these. You don't even need to be an AAE to participate in these student organizations. And this is just a small snippet of the different opportunities that Purdue has to offer. So a lot of our students will take part in some sort of project um, student organization. So um, let's see, Purdue Space Program, um, the Purdue Orbital Robotics teams, Purdue Lunabotics, they all do um, different projects, same with Purdue SAE Aero and Purdue Orbital. And so they will work on some sort of project, sometimes some kind of competition, and it's a great way to get hands-on experience and put some of your engineering knowledge into practice. But there's also some other organizations that are more um, based around professional development, such as AIAA and the Women in Aerospace program. Um, this allows you for some networking opportunities and some professional development and leadership development as well. Another option that our students have is to study abroad. This could be both um, short-term and long-term programs. Um, Typically, if a student is doing a long-term program, they will go for one semester. The most um, typical time frame for that is the second semester of the junior year. Um, classes that we've evaluated for um, different countries and different institutions that have AAE course options um, most align best with the second semester junior year list. And so this list of countries that you see is, are some of the places that we have sent students and where they've been able to take some of our AAE classes and still stay on track for graduation. Um, but it allows them to get that global experience um, that, is, that can be very helpful um, as you're moving into a job market. So there's a lot of options there. Um, but if the long term is not what you're looking for, there are short term opportunities as well. Uh, there are Maymester options, sometimes spring break options, winter term. So there are definitely several different kinds of options for study abroad if that is something that you are looking to do. Other things that our students do include undergraduate research. So um, we do have independent study where our uh, students will work with a faculty member on their research project. You could get course credit for this, uh, or you could um, potentially work for pay depending on the faculty member. There is also the SURF Summer Undergraduate Research Fellowship, which is a summer research opportunity that you can utilize. And then another opportunity is also the vertically integrated projects area. And so that's where you're working with a faculty member on their research project, um, but it's also very hands-on. So this is another way for students to get hands-on experience and is usually a great way too for students who are looking to move into graduate studies after they finish their undergraduate degree. 
A lot of our students will also do different job experiences, and that includes internships or the co-op certificate. Most often for internships, which are usually a one-off opportunity, um, typically are done in the summer semester, or it's during the summer months. Uh, but they have been opportunities for both um, fall and spring option is, options as well. Uh, this is a great way to di diversify your experience. You get to try a new company every summer if you um, want to do that. If you are looking for help on kind of preparing for internships or the job search itself, the Center for Career Opportunities is a great place to go for that. Um, meanwhile, the co-op certificate is very similar to internships, except you are with one company typically for three to five rotations, um, usually between one to two companies, and you'll alternate between work sessions and academic sessions. So you'll go, you know, work for a spring semester and come back for classes in a fall semester and kind of go back and forth. So at the end of that, you will have 12 to 22 months of experience and you earn an academic certificate with the co-op program. So that is a, these are great ways to, um, again, get more hands-on experience and oftentimes will lead to um, job offers at the end. So it's a great way to get that hands-on experience. We also have an alumni and student mentorship program. So you have an opportunity to be matched with an AAE alum that has some industry experience. Um, you can meet with them as often as you want, whether that's in person or over Zoom. Most often it's probably gonna be over, um, over Zoom because typically our alums are kind of all over the country and all over the world. Um, but this is a great way to kind of get some mentorship and get some professional guidance if that's something that you are looking for. And the final thing that I want to go over is we do have a combined bachelor's and master's option for our students. So you can complete both your bachelor's degree and your master's degree in as little as five years. Basically how that is done is you dual count up to 12 credits of 500 level coursework. Um, so that'll count for both your bachelor's and your master's degree. Typically our students will do that in their final year with their specialization courses. Uh, so you'll see that during your freshman to junior year, you're working on the BS degree, senior year, you're doing both BS and MS. And then when you finish your bachelor's degree and move straight into the master's, um, you just work on finishing up the MS portion. Um, so that's something you wouldn't apply for right now. That's uh, something you would apply for during your junior year, but we do want to make you aware that that could potentially be an option for you, for an opportunity in the future. So that is what I have for today. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to AAE UGrad office at purdue.edu. You'll see that in the next slide as well. And feel free to reach out if you have any further questions. Thank you for your time.